Greetings, this is Eurosol from the Eureka Earth Heart community and today is the General Illusion Day in England as some people have called it or more widely known as the General Election Day and I'm not someone who is particularly interested in politics I understand that politics is a symptom of a deeper dysfunction in society and as we know, generally speaking, it doesn't solve problems. Generally speaking, it only really increases problems, at least in this part of the planet. And so I understand that politics ultimately um, will fade away when the deeper uh, dysfunctions and imbalances in individuals and in society are healed. That said, we do have a political system, so we can learn a lot from observing it. And um, what I've seen today is, as you probably know by now, that the Conservative Party in the UK has um, so-called won the election. If you actually look at the figures, the number, total number of voters for each party, you'll see that, for example, the Green Party got over a million votes, yet got very little amounts of actual MPs, very small amount of MPs, who will then go on to sit in Parliament and actually have a say in the way the government operates. So bearing in mind that the Greens got really quite a lot of votes and yet they won't get much of a say, obviously there's a slight problem. Meaning that if a lot of the people want a particular direction to be taken in the country, quite often that isn't reflected in the government. And this is not helping anyone. Um, so I'm not somebody who has spent a huge amount of their life studying politics as I said and so I don't necessarily have all of the specifics relating to this however I am trained as a systems architect and do have a lot of experience within the design and analysis and construction and debugging of systems so that gives me a viewpoint if you like to comment on the political system simply as a system and also on the human body and other systems as well from a perspective of a systems analyst rather than somebody who is very much entrenched within that one particular system. This is something which historically we haven't really had that much on this planet so a lot of people aren't familiar with the kinds of logic that I might be familiar with and so therefore they won't necessarily have encountered a lot of the time, kinds of ideas that, that I have and that I consider to be useful. So. Um, I'll start off with some of my observations here of the political system just based on my experiences in relation to what I've just mentioned, which is to say that I've only ever wanted to contact an MP once in my whole life, and that was a while ago while I was learning about um, driving licences and the whole idea that statutes and acts um, passed by Parliament are only enforceable based on our consent. I think the quote is along the lines of from, a, I think it was from a judge or someone along those lines saying that Statutes and acts are given the force of law by the consent of the governed, which means that statutes and acts basically aren't laws until you, as a so-called citizen, consent um, to them and to be governed. So, therefore, if you don't consent to being governed or to that particular statute, then it doesn't apply to you. And this has been tested by numerous people with although I wasn't there, it would appear that they had a fair amount of success and I've even seen um, police officers filmed confirming that they're aware that that is the situation with statutes and acts and that in fact they need to be um, consented to to even have any validity at all, to be enforceable. Um, so that was, in relation to those sorts of topics, was why I wanted to contact the MP and I found it very difficult to contact the MP here in Norfolk. In fact, I couldn't contact the MP, I got no real response. Um, after uh, at least a day's worth of investigation and phoning different people to try and find out who to speak to and so on. So I gave up and uh, you know, I don't really expect them to be able to help me anyway because obviously what I'm asking about is something which undermines their parliamentary powers in the first place or apparently to be more precise it um, clarifies the parliamentary powers and reclaims some of the power from them that they shouldn't have but that they've been using anyway through our own ignorance and us not really understanding that they don't, even within that system, have the powers that most people think they do have. So anyway, in the course of this exploration I realised that, well, let's say an MP is voted in who is of a particular political party in my 
constituency area that I'm living in and they totally disagree with everything that I think. That basically means that even if there are many people across the country who agree with me, potentially millions and millions of people that agree with me, if my MP doesn't agree with me, then my voice isn't necessarily going to get heard in Parliament as a result of my representatives because they're going to potentially stop me and my messages getting through to Parliament. So this is not a good system from the perspective of information flow. There are barriers to information flow, and if the people in Parliament are there to honestly be a representative of the people rather than just to push their own agenda, then this system is not a functional one. It doesn't. It is basically it's archaic and it's broken. Another problem which exists with this system, and and to me this is probably one of the most significant problems, and it's very rarely dealt with publicly or spoken about in the media as such, as far as I'm aware, which is that of voter rigging, vote rigging, and corruption. And if you look back at the 2000 election in America, um, and as many people have done, and there are even several documentaries about this topic, you'll see that it's pretty clear that the vote system, the voting was rigged by the Bush clan um, to favour them so that they would win. And I'll leave some links beneath this video and wherever it is that you see it to, uh, to the documentaries that I've, that I've seen that I'm talking about, where they use postal, postal voting, um, manipulation techniques and also um, they they use various methods to strike out people from the voting lists basically uh, based on sort of arbitrary and nonsense rules to say oh well these people can't vote because of x y and z and they did this in such a way that specific um, demographic groups were excluded namely people of dark skin and perhaps poorer um, backgrounds uh, from a money perspective weren't able to vote, so they actually artificially improved their, their own, uh, the Bush family and so on, their party uh, artificially increased their uh, result and they won. So bearing that in mind and bearing in mind the famous quote which again came from the internet, it might not be entirely true, but I understand that there's a quote from St Joseph Stalin in Russia where he said, I care not um, who the people vote for if I know who's counting the votes. So in other words, all of this rigmarole and media um, activity and discussions and arguments and so on about who's the best party count for very little if the actual system of voting is easily uh, manipulatable. And I think if you were to ask most people, they wouldn't really know very much at all about how the votes are counted um, and the process involved. And for all I or most people know, it could be completely corrupt. Uh, and there can't be more than let's say a few thousand people involved in that process and how difficult would it be to pay off a few thousand people if you've got vast amounts of money like some of the banking fraternities do uh, corporations they've basically got trillions if not you know billions if not trillions of, of pounds so it's not difficult to buy off a few thousand people is it um, so these are all major problems and if you were to introduce a digital system into parliament you still got the problem well that can be completely rigged um, in fact, it's quite easy to do that if you've got access to the system. You've just got to write some code and hack it, basically, and, and fix it in your favour so that it doesn't matter who votes for, for what policy, your outcome is the one that gets presented as being the winner. So all of these problems amount to a system that's not reliable and can't be trusted and shouldn't be trusted by people who actually have integrity and want to make life better because you know we've got to accept that there are a lot of people who don't have integrity and who don't have everyone's best interests at heart and let's be honest I mean if everybody had integrity and had everyone's best interests in heart at heart probably wouldn't even have a government because everything would just work it would be flawless and there would be no concept of needing such a thing so really the government is there to hold balance, ideally, if it were to do its job correctly. So the people involved in the government need to be balanced, and they need to understand what balance is, and they need to live in a balanced way. Um, and as we've seen, as many people have pointed out, you know that's not happening. It's pretty much never occurred that there have been really well-balanced people in there, and that's a reflection of the people on the planet. I mean, collectively, we aren't especially balanced. We have a lot of issues which we can see through all our health issues and lack and scarcity and struggles. Um, and we need to address those internally at the heart of the issue and their root causes within us, within our consciousness, and be balanced and correct our imbalances. And from there, 
a balanced government, if we need one, will arise. Um, so, again, coming back from a systems perspective, what I've really learned is that systems are, generally speaking, only there to make up for a lack of self-empowerment and a lack of um, attunement to what we need in the present moment. And so systemlessness is actually what I advocate, which means that you're not referring to a rule book and you're not referring to uh, what's meant to be or supposed to be happening or what's meant to be right. You're actually feeling and knowing and attuning to everything in the present moment, all the details of reality, and you are uncovering and learning and evolving and expanding your understanding in such a way that you can create new ideas and new solutions to problems. Um, and that's how life needs to be, because life is always changing. So, how does this relate back to where we are right now? Well, obviously the government system that we have doesn't operate that way. It's very rigid. Um, it's, it seems to me to be very unfair and unbalanced in that people need to have quite a lot of money to be involved with it, um, to get their voice heard in a way that other parties do. Uh, and I don't think it's a coincidence that the Conservative Party has won, and or allegedly, and they, as far as I'm aware, collectively have the most donors and the most money of all of the parties. I mean, I remember there was a story from a few, a few weeks ago where they were, it was shown how much they were spending on Facebook, for example, to buy likes from people. I mean, that's not an act of integrity, to have somebody falsely represent you, in this case Facebook, as having more people liking you than you really do. Uh, and the only reason they would do that is to get more coverage on Facebook and also to produce a, a sort of false image of themselves. And those people among us who are kind of herd creatures, who don't so much think for themselves, but rather look out for fitting in with other people, look out for what, how they can adapt their behaviour so that they do fit in with other people, maybe they'll increase the level of uh, their own personal bias towards the Conservatives as a result of seeing how other people like them. So they have done that. The Conservatives did do that. It was reported quite widely. Um, so these people, I mean, you don't even need to know these things to know they don't operate with integrity. you just got to look at their track record. But still, they got the most votes. So obviously <laughs> something's a bit awry here. It's within us as individuals for making the decisions that are heartless, that result in us having representatives who only think of money and they're not really interested in the truth or integrity um, so much. They have false belief systems and uh, this can be proven really by any in-depth investigation of the financial system for example. And there aren't really any political parties, or maybe there's one, actually the Ubuntu party in Britain who almost no one knows about, but for the most part there aren't any political parties, major ones, who even recognise publicly that the financial system is completely fraudulent. Um, it's nearly entirely all of the money, nearly all of it is based on fraudulently created um, loan finance and digital currency. Well, when I say digital currency, I mean basically money made out of nothing in the banking system based on the fiat currency and um, fractional reserve system, which you would need to research for yourself to fully appreciate. But in summation, it means that the banks and anyone, well, mainly the banks, have been really just, they're able to legally create money from nothing every time they loan money to someone. Uh, they can just exponentially increase the amount of money that they have just through loaning money. They don't need to do anything to earn it at all or put any value into the planet at all. They just get more money, um, which sounds insane until you look into it and realise that actually is what they're doing. Um, and it is insane. So um, the other point about that is that they're charging interest on those loans and th that interest is not being created. Uh, in society, there is no that money is not created. There's no process to create the money to pay it back as interest. And then it result being that if you've got a big, um, a large number of people who are loaning money and buying, using mortgages and so on, then it result is the inevitable result is that many of them will lose their houses. It, it can't, that can't. There's no other potential outcome because the money doesn't exist to pay the interest back. And so anybody who operates that system knowingly is defrauding large numbers of people is totally outside of integrity and should not be trusted and ultimately should not have any say or power in, in a government at all. They're, they're ultimately criminals. Um, and the fact that most of the major parties make no mention of this, and yet it's the massive gorilla sitting in the room with us, if you like that phrase, you know, the, the obvious issue that no one's paying attention to that's having a massive effect on everything, 
the fact that they're not talking about these things says a lot, really. And um, the solution that's needed will not come from them. And it needs to come from our own hearts, our own wills, our own desires, and our own intention to create a balanced, harmonious society that operates with integrity. And once we as individuals do that on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, with every breath, with every choice we make, we choose integrity instead of non-integrity. We love ourselves instead of ignoring ourselves. We allow for new possibilities instead of closing them off in our mind. We choose to eat the best we can instead of eating fast food. Every one of these choices that improves our balance and that is balanced will help to co-create a more balanced reality for everyone. And gradually, this um, corrupt political system will just fragment and fall away because it can't be sustained anymore in a harmonious vibrational reality, which is what I'm talking about creating. Um, the only way that these um, broken and fraudulent systems can continue to exist is through a combination of our ignorance and our willingness to allow them to. So once we know that they're fraudulent, and we do our own research and we discover, wow, they really are totally fraudulent and criminal ultimately, and when they're defrauding us just by their day-to-day -day operations, we're not going to support them anymore. And people will create better ways of being, whether or not they have a system for it or you know some other new way of being life will improve. But as long as we're trusting these people who are operating the political systems, that they're honest and that they aren't lying to us continuously and we're not doing our own research, we're just going to continue to create the same problems over and over and over again and then blame them or blame some other people in another country. And our anger can be misdirected away from the real perpetrators of the problems onto people who have got nothing to do with us. Um, commonly they have brown skin, commonly they might have a certain religion, and uh, commonly they get set up as patsies and, and obliterated over and over again whilst the people that make weapons make lots of money out of it all. So what we're dealing with is heartlessness, ultimately. And we need to remedy that through our own healing of our own heartlessness and the growth and birth of our own real heart and our own real passion. Um, <clears throat> so coming back to the, the political issue again on this election day, um, what would I like to see occur? Well, do I think people should vote? Well, clearly from what I've said, the system is broken. So why would you put your effort into and energy into supporting a broken system? It's not a wise thing to do. If your car's broken, you don't sit there p pumping the pedal, trying to make it go when it's just not going to drive anywhere. You know, you need to make the changes that are called for to get where you want to go. So my suggestion is to come together in groups, non-political groups, people with like intention, people who have the intention to improve life, and to, let's say, form communities which can be self-sustaining, grow your own food, don't rely on corporations, don't rely on money. Just do everything that you can to not use money or the corporate version of reality and to actually connect to the earth, connect to the elements, connect to spirit, connect to all of yourself and unify and be empowered. And we can break apart all of these um, artificial man-made and woman-made control systems which do not serve us and which ultimately um, will only ever cause more and more problems on the planet. So I'm not advocating violence, I'm not advocating um, anything which causes imbalance. What I'm advocating is actually a move from imbalance to balance. And, and that's really what um, we can call evolution. So it's not so much revolution as evolution um, in the sense that we evolve our own consciousness and we evolve our, evolve our own um, way of being such that we can inspire others and collectively we can really create some magical, awesome, or inspiring um, lives and uh, communities um, and render the old ways basically of hierarchy and corruption and power struggles to be known to be futile and useless, which is what they are. But while we're all caught up in that to some extent, those, uh, those old habits and rituals of um, power struggles and uh, false belief systems and denial, we're still attracted to those old systems. 
um, and to us they might seem quite good. Just like a heroin addict might think that heroin's quite good, um, but overall uh, it's not helping. So I'm advocating liberation, I'm advocating um, systemlessness, I'm advocating joy, I'm advocating love, I'm advocating healing, I'm advocating balance, I'm av advocating evolution. And I'll stop here really because as anybody who has ever actually talked to me on these sorts of subjects will know I can pretty much talk indefinitely and I can go on for hours and hours and hours but I'll end this here and no doubt I'll put out some other videos which go into uh, more depth on some of the other topics that relate to this as the days progress. Um, as always you're invited to eureka.org U -R -E -K -A .org, which is a free social network which I've created and it's kind of a replacement for Facebook. It doesn't have any adverts, there's no commercial aspect to it, there's no data mining, there's no spying. Uh, it's purely a place for free will expression and for people to come together and learn and grow and share and evolve together in a loving way. Um, so basically, it's, it's, it's basically the internet representation of the ideas I've been talking about in this video today. So you're welcome to come along, it's free and maybe I'll see you there.